one. Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you find yourself in this very dark world. Tonight we return to Orlando Ascended, where we go to the main Order of Hermes Sanctum Gathering, where a lot of the new mages are now becoming acquainted with the mages that have had been here a bit longer. In this main gathering that's been called by Xavier, he wanted all of the mages to get acquainted. Tonight we have Jesse Wong, Dahlia Loli, Claire Redwood, and of course, Clea. We will begin the scene with the camera panning down to the main Order of Hermes meeting room, so to speak, where all of the mages await. Some of them have discovered some very troubling news about events happening in Orlando. You may begin and introduce yourselves. We will start with Clea at the far left. Uh, Clea is probably just uh, sitting, waiting, twitching, holding her journal in her hands so that she will be able to uh, remember who everyone is, although the big serious dude is not yet numbered, so that will be a problem, because he doesn't remember his name. <laughs> so she gets some anxiety. There. <laughs> Next. Miss Claire Redwood, this is the first time you've been in the Order's Hermes Sanctum, and it's very nice. Very neat and organized. No voices here, so to speak. Claire is just smiling happily and breathing in. Dahlia. Dahlia is probably fiddling with a small glass vial containing some lavender as she drops a few sprigs into her water bottle. Mr. Wong? Jesse is just sitting on the floor rubbing his temples while contemplating about what he did last night and uh, looking down on the floor and he doesn't feel so good. <laughs> what, that lap dance didn't do you good? <laughs> uh, very bad. Uh, it's at this point, uh, you are all alone in the room until two people come in. The first is this woman, second is this man. He says, oh my, we have a lot of mages here now. The city of Orlando is getting a lot bigger. Perhaps, perhaps this is the White Walkers, yes. And then he, she, the woman just puts a hand on his shoulder and she says, Alex, just sit down and enjoy yourself for a minute. Just let, let, let me do this. There are no white walkers here. And he just sits down and kind of grumble, mumble, grumbles. And she says, Hello, everyone. My name is Jada Brolock. I am the head for Vayner Mage of Orlando. And then she looks over at Dahlia and gives a polite bow and says, Dahlia, how are you? It's good to see you again. Oh, things are a bit crazy right now, but when aren't they? Indeed, when aren't they, especially in this city? <sighs> we do have some things to discuss, though. Of course. If at all possible, we need to take care of this little haunt problem as soon as we can. But it's a delicate matter. 
nonetheless, if you're all up for it, we can proceed within three nights' time. We can make sure that you are all well equipped, well propered, and we will aid you in this matter as well. The other traditions are a bit busy with other matters, but me and Alex here can aid you in this expedition, so to speak. I'm ready to go when they are. Good. In three nights' time, we shall commence then. We will need uh, a lot of proper footing for this, but we did discover some more news tonight. A bit, some troubling, some not. The troubling news is, is that this haunt does have something to do, indeed, with the maelstrom that is happening out in the middle of the sea. The leftover remnants of the last Avatar storm. Is that what brought the guy that fell out of the sky? Oh, yes. Wait, that wait. Was... But never mind, I'm done asking questions anymore. Oh, 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 yeah, you were not there. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, we were at the park, and, uh, you know, that creepy lady was creeping me out, and then uh, number two came out, and then, boom, the dude came out from the sky and, like, fell in the fountain. It was weird. Claire, she calls me creepy for some reason. I just wanted to make sure she was safe. If she raises her hand, Dahlia cannot see it. She doesn't know that, though. So, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Claire, 11, Claire, yes. I have it written here, yes. And, yeah, and that guy was named, uh, he was eight. Uh, Damien Wolf, he was called, yes, that's his name. That's his name, or, I, well, okay, I didn't remember it, but I have it yes, written we... down. Iroh introduced me to him and we spoke. It seems that poor man went through some kind of continuum and it was probably very scary, but nonetheless he's been told of a situation and what he can and cannot do, and he is welcome here in Orlando as one of our Verbena. Oh, he's Verbena. Interesting. Oh yeah, he's one of you. Indeed he is. Now, I wanted to bring you all here tonight because I wanted to tell you about something else that has been happening here, and something that I wanted some of you to start looking into after this whole house business is dealt with. Okay. Okay. I, 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 I'll bite. <laughs> she says... When we get the time, I will need all of you, and we must make a visit to Doistep. Where? Uh, Doistep. Have you never... Oh, yes, that's right. You're very new here. Have you never been to Doistep, Mr. Wong? No. I, uh, I've only been awakened for, like, a few months. Doistep is... Doisip is a very open and very fan that very fantastic city for mages. It is, uh, as the humans would call it, think of Doisip as our version of New York City. Disneyland. Some could call it that. And we will need to make a trip to the Upper Horizon Realms and leave Doistep to find a uh, particular crack in one of the realms that's causing a problem. But that is for a future date. Nothing to worry about ourselves now. Forgive me, sometimes I get very far ahead of myself. Yeah, but now you get me curious and I need to know more. Would you hush? Uh, 
what do I need to roll when curiosity kicks in? I do believe it is a will save. Typically for mental things like that, yeah, it's a willpower. What's the difficulty for this? F6. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll shut up. Thank you, let the woman talk. She pauses for a moment, she says. No, no, Dahlia. That's all right. To each their own, after all. Nonetheless, I also brought all of the mages here because I wanted to, in agreement with Xavier, I wanted to pass a... We both agreed that it is best to probably pass a little bit of a curfew slash watch, so to speak, with all of the murders happening recently and with these killers being powerful enough to indiscriminately kill lupines, mages, and vampires at will. That no mage is to go out at night alone, and no mage is to go alone. Period. Anywhere. And I wanted to have people assigned to certain people. But since you're all in the same position now to make your own sanctum, so to speak, I figured all of you should have the ch opportunity to choose who you wanted to go with you. I would not force anyone upon you. Can I, like, take Leah? She's already, like, an annoying sister to me anyway. Do I get a say? Well, if we are, we're taking the bike. Uh, and, uh, why? Uh, well, this is uh, weird because I have work and things to do and I can't be taking little Jesse there. Uh, how does that work exactly, this curfew? Uh, the, the man kind of pipes up and he says, We are mages. Use your head. I don't know if my head is my strongest part. Doesn't it Clearly. have like you're a mate? It certainly should be. Clearly. By the way, my name is Alex. Don't even try to pronounce my last name. Just call me Alex. Or you could call oh. me Giant Bane. Either or. Hello, Mr. Giant Bane, sir. I am Jesse. Oh, pleasure to meet you, Wong. And he shakes your hand a little bit vigorously, like you know way too emphatically and he like shakes your whole arm up and down I i'm clea oh, good to meet you clea and uh, he goes to claire shakes her hand she stops actually sketching a man that looks like he's been burnt black i'm claire redwood nice to meet you ah a euthanatos hmm. so we have life and death in the room intriguing and then he goes to Dahlia, and uh, Dahlia being blind, is she one of those people who doesn't like people holding out their hand, or does she prefer just to, for the person to rest their hand on the shoulder? She, she would uh, prefer he rests his hand on her shoulder. Yeah, that's, that's what he does. And he's like, oh, Dahlia, a pleasure she as She will uh, place his, her hand over his. It's a pleasure Always as good always. to meet you. Always good to meet you. He goes and he sits down again. He says, well, for this curfew, we will need people to stay together on this one. We're going to need to pull our resources, make sure none of us are alone, period. And I mean, period, Clea. Yeah, but I don't understand the logistics of that. It's not working. Well, would you well well would you rather life be frustrating or would you rather be dead? It's a 
doesn't mean I have to invite someone else into my sanctum. I'd rather be able to work uh, normally without subjecting anyone to anything. Uh, Corman kind of completely ignores Clea, and then uh, Jada looks over at Dahlia. And she says, Dahlia, I would never force you to take anyone into your sanctum that you would not want to. That's why I'm getting everyone here together, so we can discuss who precisely we would want our partners to be. Claire a clear throat, and she'll be like, I do not mind anyone, you can, as long as you can assign them. I do not know many inside the city limits. As long as they don't mind my flowers. Of course, of course. By the way, are there any plants in this room? Uh, yes, there is a plant over in, on the frame near a projector that is in, just kind of randomly there. Is it at all close to Dahlia? Yes. The second she got close to it, it would, you know, start sprouting and, you know, bloom. It brooms and it blooms into a very, very nice, what looks to be sunflower. <sighs> Without fail, they always bloom when I'm around. <laughs> it's always a beautiful thing to watch, Dolly. I wish I was graced with your gift. <laughs> Technically, it's a flaw. Not the way she sees it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's the echoes flaw. Yep. She uh. She kind of reaches out her hand towards the dandelion, or to the sunflower, and you can see the... For those of you who haven't seen this before, Dahlia, you've seen this a hundred times, but for those who have not seen this, you see the sunflower literally look towards Jada and start to reach out its vines and touch her hand almost like it has a hand of its own. Not only creepy people, there are creepy plants, too. Don't be rude. I really am sorry that I creeped you out. Nonsense, Claire. I think she is just... has a lot on her mind. That one's a little odd. Hmm. I'm right here, you know. Tell me, Clea, have you spoke to Quentin yet? I believe he was very interested in meeting you. Mm, no. He is an etherite like yourself. I haven't met any of my order yet. I have to go and... Mm, I, I was sent to the morgue, but I guess I didn't go yet because things have been happening all the time, and mm, I guess I must have uh, forgotten. At that, at that very... Uh little remark uh door opens and this man walks in Everman. he sits down he, he bows to uh the two verbena and then he looks at all of you and then looks at dahlia bows and greets all of you normally sits down and says so i am late jada just had some things to do nonsense mark actually you're right on time I'm glad another etherite could be here. Uh, have you met Clea yet? Oh, no, I don't believe I have. Hi. I heard about you coming in. Hey, name's Mark. Good to see you. I I'm Clea. I should wave. <laughs> I'll wave at her and shake, go up and shake her hand. He says, so Jada, we've, um... I got some of the other etherites behind us. Uh, I've got the only two virtual adepts in the city. And uh, we're all in agreement. I think uh, your plan is, uh, I think your plan will work good. Thank you, Mark. It's nice that we are all uh, in accord with this. Do you have the other members that uh, might be able to, uh, shall we say, the more experienced mages to, shall we say, watch these ones? Oh yeah, we got plenty. Plenty of us, and most of us share paradigms pretty easily enough, so I mean, be it works. Well, that's what we meant by, you know, partners and whatnot. We're going to assign mages together in pairs, so to speak. 
<laughs> Maybe we'll get to work together, Clea. Look, I'm already getting some anxiety. You don't need to... No. Clea. Yes. You feel a bit of a calm aura wash over you, and your anxiety fails away. Just don't think about it for a few moments, probably. Well, then we'll have to deal with it fast, because I... Well, I have work to do, and I can't be working with people on me, or around me, or watching me, you what know? What kind of job is it even? I work at night. So... What does that oh. mean? Like Are a like, janitor or a stripper? Or like uh, a quote unquote <laughs> night lady? It's a fetish club. Mark just kind of. Oh, which one? <laughs> I'm not really comfortable talking about it. Let's just. Mark, Mark looks at his watch and he says, Actually, that reminds me. I think Hannah should be coming to the door, right? And you see this woman enter. She says, oh, Sorry I'm late. And she uh, comes up to uh, Jada and they greet very, almost like a sisterhood. She kisses Jada on the cheeks and she says, I'm so sorry I'm late, dear. And then Jada's like, Nonsense, dear. You're, you're perfectly, you're perfectly fine. She here, take a seat. Quite a few people tonight. Well, indeed, we all had to come together and decide who, which of our uh, members were to be doing things and working with certain people, so to speak. The more, and the merrier. Yeah. Okay. Indeed. Uh, ho ho hold up, hold up, because there are too many people coming in. I need to, <laughs> I, I need to keep track of who's yep. who here. And so. Yep. And right on her heels, this woman enters oh, for fuck's and, sits sake. and sits down. She sits down, just kind of gives everyone a very nice nod, sits over in the back. Okay, I don't even know if I have enough numbers for everyone. Um, I'm you sorry, can... everyone, but Leah can't remember names, so she has to associate a name with a number. You could always give the number I have to someone else. I doubt I'm very important for your memory. You, uh, excuse me, but the red flags are the most important ones. She already has to deep in her mind because she creeped her out, and, probably. And I don't reassign numbers. This, this, no, no. What if the number dies? Well, we'll see when that happens. So the wheel turns. So the wheel turns. Well said, Dahlia, as this woman comes in. Oh, more people. Okay. Oh, hello, ma'am. This is, this is a woman you've met, though, before. Yeah, this is number 20. This is Vala. I remember that. Yes. By remember, I mean she has the journal open. <laughs> yeah, Cla Claire's literally flipped to a new notebook page and is sketching a church now. Yeah, you've also seen uh, in this room, it's a very big meeting room. It looks like it could seat maybe about a good 60 people. And there are some familiar faces that all start to pile in. Um, and some unfamiliar faces. The two familiar faces you see are this man. Hello. Of course. And then the other one you see is this man. Come in. And Claire has met neither of those. Okay. He's going to go up and uh, greet Matthias with a kiss on the cheek. I'm pretty sure I'm missing someone. Matthias greets you the same way, gives you a nice kiss on the cheek, and he says, Valia, good to see you again. <laughs> and the same to you. No, it's... Yes, just going to wave up Matthias. When he's oh. no longer talking to uh, Hi, Dahlia. Number six. Hi, number one. Mr. Wong, good to see you again. Clea. And a newcomer, Claire. 
Uh, hi, I'm Claire Redwood. She'll actually look up from her church sketch and smile and nod to them and be very civil. Or so, as Clea knows me, number 11, and she'll go back to her sketch. Mm -hmm. At this point, the room is filled with a lot of mages and varied. Uh, There's a lot of people in the room. Can I ask, uh, did I miss anyone? It was Jada and Alex at first, and then there was Mac, or there was someone else? Okay, let's put it this way. You know all of those overlays yeah. that I made, with exception of a few? Yeah. Pretty much every single overlay person is in the room right now. Oh, shit. Literally almost I all my NPCs are shit. in one room. Yeah, literally almost all my NPCs are in one room. Okay, I, I, I can only add the people that have heard their names, so that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna... Oh, fuck. Okay. Claire is offering Clea extra paper for her journal. I, I have enough paper, it's... No, no. There's too many people. After a while, things kind of settle down. A lot of the mages greet one another. And then Jada kind of pipes up. And uh, you notice that even Xavier is in the room now. And he, uh, or she, um, Kind of pipes up and she says, mm -hmm. Right. I think uh, we should all assign our members as we all see fit as a council and as we all see fit as a true coterie, so to speak. And she holds her hands Cabal. Out around, Cabal, sorry. And then she holds out her hand and looks at everyone and she says, Who all do you think that these people should be? Included? Of course, Dahlia, I trust your judgment. You are far more experienced in these matters, and once again, I would not force you to take anyone into your sanctum. Well, does it have to be a mage? Out of the people in this room? No. It can be, uh, there are at least four in here that are not mages. No, I'm well aware of at least one of them. She uh, seems to know exactly who you're talking about. She looks over at Matthias. She says, Matthias, would you be all right with this? Matthias looks up, looks at Dahlia, and says, I would be more than happy with it. It would uh, give me a chance to get out of the coffee shop every now and then. Um, Claire will put in the request that since Clea is uncomfortable with it, she be assigned to someone besides Clea. Claire, and Claire's okay with anyone else. Okay. So this is where we'll need to start getting some stuff written down here for those of you who have the ability to take notes down. Mm, yeah. And I'll put this I'll put this in my notes too. So Dahlia wants Matthias, right? Yep. Okay, let me go ahead and put some stuff under announcements here. So Okay. So, switch to send it. All right. Let's start from the left to the right. Clea, out of everyone, is there anyone in particular that you would want to kind of be around? I know that Zach would probably work the best for you, but it's your choice. I don't know. What do you suggest? For your kind of work, Zach probably would be the one best to hang around. All right. Either Zach or, um, uh, Chris. Since they both kind of have the same job. Who's Chris? I don't believe I have met this person. He's not in my numbers list. Chris is uh, this man, who is also in the room with everyone. Oh, hi. So, I... are there like a lot of people who work at fetish clubs in here? Uh, when you say fetish club, um, you'll see two people uh, kind of perk up to that. One is 
Hannah, who came in earlier. And then the other one is this man. <laughs> you dog. And, uh, <laughs> put Claire will kind of chuckle and she goes, I thought the lap dance I bought you was too powerful, Mr. Wong. I don't think you could handle a fetish club. Both, Dar both Darren and Hannah just look at Claire and then you see Darren go, I like this, you Thanatos. She knows how to party. Uh, God. This is a very uncomfortable situation. Well, uh, well. That is quite odd for the Thanatoi. I'm sorry, Miss Clea. I'll go back to being quiet. And she'll go back to her notebook. <laughs> Nonsense. Even, uh, even, even, uh, down over there knows how to party. I mean, come on, you Thanatos know how to party. He kind of looks over at Dahlia, and then he looks over at the other Verbena, and he's like, I mean, he's like, heck, they almost party as good as the Verbena. No offense, <laughs> no offense, no, no offense, Jada, you just... <sighs> he takes a breath up, and he says literally right out of the book, right out of the stereotype of the um, Cult of Ecstasy to the Verbena, he's like, you guys got some good shit. <laughs> you bet your ass we do. Says, yeah. Okay. I think this is getting now. a bit derailed. Like, um, who would be comfortable with me around? I suppose. Claire starts to raise her hand and then puts it back down. I could take on this new one. I will see to it that. Uh, I'll, I will be this one second. Is that okay with you, Clea? I guess, um, your name was, uh, Chris, right? Chris. Is... Chris Ober. Okay, is the number 17 good for you? The number 17 works fine for me. Thank you. Okay. 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 That's done. Okay. Going to Claire. Uh, Claire just kind of looks up around the group and smiles. Anyone you assign is fine with me. Long as they don't trash my garden. We'll have to exchange gardening tips sometime. Unfortunately, I can't grow much. I grow those little yellow daffodils and those wildflowers. That's about all I can handle. Well, that's unfortunate. Mother did always say I had a br bit of a brown thumb. I'm afraid I'm quite the opposite. You saw the flower earlier she'll kind of chuckle and she goes now if you ask me to make a cup of tea or bake a cake i'm quite well at that you see oh. this man all right go ahead continue i'll have to let you try some of my my custom blended teas i would very much like that and then she'll matter much nicer than Clea. You see, after a few moments, uh, this man kind of stand up. And he uh, looks over to you, Claire, and he's like, I would be this one second if she would take it. I have no problem with that. He says, good, I think you and I will get along just fine. And he sits down and he starts talking with you about recipes for cakes and whatnot. Turns out he's a baker. <laughs> oh, that was a great thing to throw in there. Oh, uh, she'll talk about it. She's not professionally trained, but she she's got a lot of home cookbook recipes and stuff. Alrighty. Uh, after a while, um, Mr. Wong, is there anyone that you particularly would like to go with? 
I don't really know anyone. Um, whoever will have me, I guess. After a moment, after uh, not too many people um, say much, you see this woman stand up. And she says, Mr. Wong, I will be your second if you wish. Um, okay. We can add um, some of these. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit more your age. I think I'm a bit more your mindset, too. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm Jess, and you are? She, she blinks for a moment, and she says, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> You can call me Jessica, though. And you can call me Jesse. Pleased to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Wall. Jesse. We'll get along just fine. And she chuckles a bit. And then she starts talking about like anything that you're interested in. Probably anime. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and movies. If, oh, oh, dude, if you start talking about anime, she is like into that. A total weeb. <laughs> yeah, hey, how can I be a weeb? She is a weeb. Oh. I mean, technically, he can't be a weeb. Yeah, but she can. That's what we're saying. She, she can, does. definitely. Well, she is a weeb, not he. <laughs> so at this point, you see this woman stand up. For those of you who have been here for a while, you know this as Megan Rost, the second in command of the Order of Hermes next to Xavier, and she says, Then if all are in a dune and Miss Brolock, thank you for calling this meeting. If everyone else here is a dune, then we can proceed onward and everyone may go about their ordinary business. I hereby call this meeting closed. And she kind of picks up a, not even kidding, a little bit of a gavel, hammers the table, and it almost feels like for those of you who have opened the site, which was you feel, a, you, you feel a connection between those of you and your seconds. Right. Well, this is different. Not so quiet. And after a while, a lot of people disperse, except for a few. And this is one of the guys who stays. Question, is this a mental or physical connection? The rote is binding of the mind and spirit. Oh dear. Yes. Um, however, this is not based around direct soul connection. They're not that stupid. Yeah, especially uh, not with each, Dahlia in the room. Each person is given an item usually a coin or a small, shall we say, memento, just a maybe a little bronze statue, maybe a key, whatever you feel would work with a paradigm or would do anything. These two items that were given to you and your second are what share the link. Ray and Claire's would be a set of ballpoint pens. Mm -hmm. These will do and I need to write down this effect. But for those of you who have the ability to write it down now, yeah. it is a time slash correspondence slash forces effect set on these items, or rote, so to speak. The rote is suspended when a person is targeted by a ability against their will, or mind invaded, or whatnot. It also has mind and life in it. So it's actually a correspondence, time, mind, life, and spirit. When you're targeted against your will, or your mind is invaded, or basically anything is like done to you seriously, like attacked or hurt, this will set off a almost nationwide alarm, or neighborhood watch alarm, so to speak, to all of the other mages. It will also give off your location and a little bit of information about what has attacked you. However, this is a one-time shot, so if this happens, the artifact, mo or I'm sorry, the uh, talisman must be redone. Ooh. 
Granted, it's a very powerful talisman because this warning goes to everybody. This also includes some members of the library. So this is like if someone deliberately attacks you, it's going to set off a very loud alarm. Wow. Oh. Granted, I should also state this. This artifact will not work in the High Umbra, and it will not work in the Horizon Realms. It will only work in the Shadow Realm and this realm, the Mortal Plane. Okie dokie. So if someone accidentally poofs you to another plane that's a High Realm or Horizon Realm, eh. Not gonna work. So we're fucked if we get teleported then? So we're Not necessarily. We can't mindfuck each other, right? No. Not against each other's will. Okay. So Claire is mainly right now asking Ray who the people that weren't introduced, like the one on the your overlay currently are. Oh, Ray will stay by here. Hold on a sec. He looks at you and he says, oh, that's Terran. He's a, he's a little bit of a friend of ours. Works with some of the mages and whatnot. Then I take, a, take it he's not a member of an order. Uh, no, he's, uh, he's what we call the Fallen. Oh, that sounds disturbingly dark. Uh, have you ever read the story of... Lucifer falling from heaven. Something like that. Oh, joy. Wait, so you're an angel? Heaven is real? Taryn just kind of looks down and he goes, oh my god. I don't want any apples you have to offer, sir. He's like, I'm not going to offer you any apples. That story is so silly. <laughs> Uh, when Claire says that, though, she is smiling, and you will, I mean, anyone who looks at her will notice she is wearing a pentagram around her neck. Taryn kind of looks at that and chuckles a bit. Oh, hey, Dolly oh, also has a pentacle around her neck. Uh, you know, there's another guy that fell from the sky. Did you fall, too? <laughs> oh, do not put Damien in the same category as this gentleman. Um, well, I... Okay, uh... Mr. Damien, Taryn speaks up, he's like, Mr. Damien fell through time. I fell from a different plane. Okay. The High Umbra. Did it hurt? So to speak, yes. Um, well, the falling kind of hurt, yes. In more ways than one. Okay. Do all of your kind look like they walked off a movie set? <laughs> <laughs> Some of us do, and thank you. You're welcome. Claire really doesn't like Claire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm wondering if it was just me because Miss Clea and you and Mr. Jesse and Ray even are, and Dahlia are all quite lovely, like models or actors. Um, well, you should. kind like like action movie or comedy i guess i don't watch a lot clearly he says well don't sell yourself sort claire she tilts her head at it he chuckles a bit he says beauty can be found in many places and you my dear are quite beautiful and then he looks over at Clea and he says, as are you. Don't sell yourself short. I... Well, I have other... Uh... What's the word? <laughs> other things I'm better at? Like... <laughs> He chuckles a bit, and then he notices Dahlia, and then he puts his hand very lightly on her shoulder. And he says, Dahlia, I don't believe we've been properly introduced. My name is Taryn Delmont. Nice to finally meet you. I've heard a lot about you. 
Oh, <laughs> you're the <laughs> dude in the casino. <laughs> she extends a hand. Dahlia Lowry. Taryn Delmont. I've been helping your associates. In the ribs. Stop. Why? You're being an idiot. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Pleasure to meet your acquaintance. And he sits down with some of the others that are still in the room and he uh, discuss some things and he says, So, um, apparently I'm going to have my hands full pretty soon because apparently I just did something I really shouldn't have. Oh, oh dear, what have you done? I made a deal, like my nature insists. Did you, like, trade them with their soul or something? No, I don't make those kind of deals. Well, I mean, deals could be changed or cancelled, can't they? <laughs> Once a deal is done, it must be fulfilled, or the contract broken could cause damage to both parties. That would simply be unbecoming to back out of a deal like that. Indeed. Unfortunately, I've made a deal with a particular woman, and... Now the kindred of the city are going nuts. Oh, vampires. Oh, I saw some of them. There was a grumpy one, and... The, well, the other one wasn't grumpy. Uh, well, he was kind of grumpy, but not so grumpy like the other one, but he had a bike. It was a nice bike. And they had Wait, this the one with the that bike. was a vampire, but not a vampire, but he was... Yeah. I guess I shouldn't be talking about this. Sorry. Is the one in the back the one who called you a bitch, or uh, was it cunt, one of those words? Yeah, that's the grumpy one. Taryn, Ray, and a few of the others are just kind of looking at all of you like, the fuck have you guys been doing? Oh, I was just shaking I her was head, just like, I cannot even. I was just at the park. With children. I was minding I'm my own like... business, and, and then, uh, you know, the, the, the dudes just appeared, and they just, uh things happened, okay? Like, it's not like I predicted it. I... Mm. Claire is shaking her head, and she clears her throat and goes, but, I would like to think that I was not involved in that situation. But, remember the house where we're supposed to be going to that, to that house? You told me to call you for that house. I didn't, because we didn't go. Uh, yeah, so the dude that got Ash, uh, he was in that house. I know. Then why didn't you tell me? I was on my way to you, and then I saw that Brennan had it all under control. Oh, that's the dude with the earth spike. Yes. Grumpy fucker. <laughs> he is a bit grumpy, isn't he? Yeah, he called me a cunt. Maybe he just needed a cup of coffee. <laughs> I don't think that Vampires can drink coffee. Can they drink coffee? Put some blood in it. Some of them can. Indeed, just, some can. Just put some co some blood in the coffee, stir it up, and it should be okay. I mean, coffee is supposed to tense the nerves, not relax them. He probably needs some weed. Lots of it. I can't help with that. You'd have to go to one of the partiers. I could certainly help with that. Well, yeah, I might take you up on Math that offer. Matthias raises eyebrows. Oh, excellent. <laughs> what? I have quite the green thumb. I mean, she goes, I mean, I have something that might help one relax, but it would need to be in something it was drinking from system first okay your creepy vibes are getting creepier and creepier now you're roofing people wait what it's not a it's not a roofie That's she says it like that... crosses her arms nervously That's what it sounds like it's just uh... a... Matthias leans over in Dahlia's ear and he says, 
Oh, this is getting better and better by the minute. Oh, yeah. I'm not paranoid, am I? Why are you so mad at her? I'm not mad at her. You're, like, always angry at her no, for some reason just angry. because she followed you in the park. It's, ah, she came to talk to me. She followed me. Then she has to buy me a drink. Now she wants to roofie people. Debbie, she bought me a drink too and like a weird dance thing yeah, and it, no, it was well. Creepy. A weird dance? Uh, yeah. yeah. She lap dance. Oh my, you got your I... first lap dance, did you, dear? Claire's now looking embarrassed. I only asked the dancer to perform for him because he would not stop looking at her when we were at Club Bones. Aww. Well, the fact oh, dear. that he Club Bones doesn't mean that he needed to bone everyone. Okay, mm -hmm. to give Mr. Wong some credit. I highly yeah. doubt he yeah, I'll give Mr. Dong all the credit. Jess is like being embarrassed now. It's just red and looking at the floor and twiddling his fingers. A child of Pan. He doesn't have horn to play play a pan flute and dance around and hump everything with a set of tits. Um, he was can we please not talk Look, about this you, anymore? You took Jesse. You got him drunk. You got him. Uh, Lap dance, and now you're roofy people, and, and I'm the paranoid here. She, she just throws her hands up at this point. I did not know one drink would get him that drunk. I'm sorry. I knew it was his first. <laughs> every. Every. <laughs> every. Broke Brandon. All of those who are still left in the room, everyone, their eyes are all on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm done trying to be fucking nice to you, you cold-blooded machine, and just walks off. I think you made her mad. I'm not a machine yet. And she'll cover her mouth like, oops. No, I just a walking no, breach of the cycle. No, it's okay. You you can say that here. What does that even mean? What's the breach of a cycle even? What's a cycle? Uh, I... Oh, never mind. No, no, no. Are you're you... gonna call me names. You explain to, them, to me what they mean, okay? Quick, Claire is looking for a cup of water and has a prescription bottle in her hand at this point. She's going to offer the uh, her water bottle to her. Thank you. Yep, Dahlia, you think of a water bottle, it's there in your hand. Oh, she she has her her water. Uh, it is a stainless steel water bottle. Yep. Oh, she'll, nice. she'll she'll kind of look nervously at Ray, then pop two of the pills, close it, and start chugging some of the water. It tastes like lavender. Oh, that's lovely. Fresh grown lavender, by the way. Thank you. So what's this? Cycle, circle, bridge, whatever. Well, it's a little bit difficult for her to explain it since your paradigms are different, but let's just put it this way. Um, the cycle between life and the machine is a cycle that is currently being delved by this current reality. And the more machine you become, Clea, the more paradox will either like you or hate you. Yeah, but this is part of the future. This is where humanity is going to. That's what humanity should be aiming for. I'm not going to start in the way of my fate and my improvement. To be cold and calculating, to not respond when someone's just trying to be kind. I would rather rip my own heart out than become a machine. I mean, that's part of the idea. Exactly, same. I would sooner die than give up my emotions, my emotions love. Emotions have nothing to do with your heart, or your lungs, or your liver. They have to do with your brain. There's chemicals in your brain. That's what your emotions are. My brain Claire. is there, maybe a bit jumbled, but it's there. Claire's face is against the table now, dear Dahlia. Hold on a sec here. Did you guys, like, not fight? Like, I don't understand. Enhancing one's body doesn't 
remove one's emotions or their connection to other people. I'm connected. To who? I mean, uh, Jess. You seem to alienate right? every person that you come in contact with. <laughs> you see this man over in the corner chuckle a bit as he did not leave the room. He says, you know, they say we etherites are cold, but we have a lot of passion for what we do in our sciences and for one another, at least those of us who are true. It's you, on the other hand, Clea, seem to be missing something. Because remember, you're forgetting the very most bare basic important thing that Miss Dahlia here is trying to teach you. Science and logic and cold steel, the age of the machine, is nothing without passion. I have passion you for are, the machining. No. He smiles. You lack passion. That's bullshit. He just kind of looks at you, like, literally in the picture, like, with the sunglasses. He just gives you the Ron Perlman thousand-yard stare. <laughs> to be fair, sir, she's really passionate about her guns and her bike. You see this yeah, woman kind of start. You see this woman kind of start to rub her nose a little bit, and she says, <laughs> "This one is going to learn the hard way, I bet." To learn what? To learn what happens when a mage loses their passion and their true belief. So please explain to me what passion do you all have that I don't? Why, why am, I, am I any less than any of you? Well, for one, we're not dicks. <laughs> You're a dick right now. <laughs> As Dahlia chokes on her water. He just, he just kind of looks at you and he says, Tell me, if the chips were down, would you trust any of the people in this room to help you out? I don't know everyone that well. I know Jesse. I know uh, Dahlia. But here's the thing. Do you want to know them? Do you want to have someone at your back you can always trust? Or are you just hoping that you'll never have to do that? And you're, Clea. You're saying that I don't want Clea, to be friends? Clea, due to your backstory, this hits you kind of personally when he says this. But my backstory is I don't know anything about myself. Yeah, you don't. This is hurting. This is. You're not even realizing how badly what he's saying is actually affecting you. Are you saying that I don't want to have friends? Yeah. It's not that simple, okay? He squints his eyes at you. Then he looks over at Mark, who was still in the room as well. He says, your mind is... fragmented. Well, maybe that's You're not yourself. Maybe that's the reason why I can trust people. He'll come on over. And he says, I can help you with that, so to speak. I don't know if that would be a good idea, honestly. I don't know. I just I am... don't know. <laughs> I am an etherite just like you. We can aid you in this. Well, here's what you can do. You can uh, find my memory that I lost, you can see if it's any good, and then you can tell me, hey, you know, it's not that bad, so maybe get it back. How about that? But what if it's bad? Even our worst memories make us who we are. It is our greatest failures that shape us, not our greatest successes. fine with who I am. I can't make friends. It just takes time. I just need to work around things. 
He kind of looks at you and he says, do you want my help or not? I don't know. I'll tell you when I know you better. He says, then why don't we start with something small? About just one memory at a time. Would you like me to leave? She says plainly to Clea. Now, Claire, you stay. We're all friends here. What exactly are you asking me? To open my mind to everyone present? No. Cause that's just to me, happening. or... Just to me, or I can work through Miss Dahlia here. Despite what she may think, I can use my paradigm with hers quite well, actually. Really, now? Oh, yes. Her eyebrow arches a little bit. His, uh, his eyebrow literally copies yours. And he says, some of, some of us etherites have some nice tricks. He smiles. I suppose we'll have to see about that. Actually, uh, that virtual adept you saw in here earlier, Dahlia, did you know that she is now somehow turning digital coding and programming into organic matter? Yeah. Hmm. She is very. I know. She... She's. He looks at her and like he's Quinlan. Kind of he shifts into like a completely different mode. He's no longer like super serious. He actually gets somewhat kind of geek. He, he kind of geeks out and he sits down with Dahlia and he immediately goes into like uh, plant work and turning coding and etherite material into organic material and vice versa. And he just starts talking about. Verbena paradigm actually being able to mix with etherite and virtual edit paradigm. And then he starts getting like nerding out and completely forgets, he's completely forgotten that he was even talking to Clea. But Claire, literally where she's laying her head, mutters up, it's like green science. He looks over at Claire and he's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, dear, I believe you were doing something. Thinks for a moment and he says, Oh, yeah, I'm right. I'm not an experiment, you know. Oh, it wouldn't be an experiment. It would get done and it would get done right. Just saying we would do a little bit at a time. Mainly, if we do it all at once, it could come back and, you know, cause some backlash on you. So doing it a little bit at a time would be the best way to do it. I don't like doing stuff like that, especially in the presence of so many people. It just feels violating. Clea. Mm -hmm. It's at this point. Would you roll me your Arite Diff 3? And while she does that, I guess Claire, Jesse, and whoever else can chit chat. Can I spend a real power? <laughs> I mean, if you want to. I don't know, something tells me that I'm gonna fail. Yeah, I'm gonna spend the willpower. Okay. Yeah. So, so two hits. Yes. Alright. Clea, you retreat back into your mind's eye. Cybernetics, the theories and etherites and the science that has kept you secure for all these years. You've never once spoken with your avatar. You've never once really delved into the true aspect of what it means to be a magi. But here before you in this technological background, very similar to your overlay, you see a cybernetic version of you, much also much like in your overlay, looking straight back at you. And it says, hey, how's it going? But that's not my avatar. Is it? It is. But my avatar is a brain with wires. You look very closely. And you can see, almost like a from the movie iRobot, 
um, you see the kind of gelatin-like material. And up at the top of this machine, you see a brain with a good 10,000 wires coming down and running throughout the entire body. The brain has the brain has been given an entire form completely out of the wires. Oh, hi. Hey, Clea, how are you doing? I'm uncertain. So look around. Indeed. Indeed, your mind is fragmented and damaged as part of the attack. Am I dead? No. You were saved. But when they came for you, you almost perished. Who came for me? Why, why, why did they come for me? Why me? Because they knew you would awaken. The technocracy, at least some of the technocracy, does not take kindly to those who could awaken. Some believe they should be purged rather than Aided. The agents, the agents of Pentex came for you. For what? Out of character, do I know about Pentex? Uh, you had that one session where you learned a little bit about them. Not a whole lot. Basically, that they are a technocratic organization that tends to work a lot with things called Femori. Yeah. Uh, and Black Spiral Dancers. Yeah, um, and what did they want with me? The Avatar just tilts its head at you. Did they take my memory? I think I take my memory. I saw the paper. Your avatar just keeps tilting its head at you. That's something you'll have to discover. Nonetheless, you should accept aid from these ones. You've tried to do this on your own for so long, but it will only take you so far. If you want to truly ascend beyond these limitations that you keep putting on yourself, you will need to trust others. That will be the first hurdle that you will have to face. I can just freely put my trust in people. It hasn't worked before. <laughs> they have put their trust in you. They know more about me than I know about any of them. Perhaps you should try asking them. They might just tell you. <sighs> Fine. I'll try. Can't really promise. So, um, what is this place? Is this my brain? This is your inner sanctum, so to speak. This is your mind's eye. Oh, my mind's eye looks cool. <laughs> it laughs in a very robotic voice. It says... Why not try, Clea? You will find that your ascension can be much quicker when you open up to these other ones. And you may find that you like what you hear about them. Am I wrong wanting to enhance myself? <laughs> no. Humanity will constantly seek enhancement. 
But remember that paradigm, like science, is indeed a double-edged sword, just as everything is. The machine in science is indeed the way of the future, and it is the way that mankind will go until there is no more. But the ways of old and the earth, along with the science and the metal, must coexist. If it can't coexist, then existence is over. I'm coexisting? I practically have housemates. I mean, I live at Dr. Dude's garage. I pay him rent. I see him, we speak. You're not truly coexisting. Well, there are some Mind. things they can't really know, right? The mind, the life, the body, the spirit. Tell me, can you tell me the difference between a human brain and a computer chip? One is organic, the other one is electronic. And even then, when you look at the elements, the bare basic periodic table that the technocrats took such a pleasure in making, what truly is the difference? And in some cases, even the very basic elements are the same, just refined. It appears that you will need to learn some new lessons, Clea. But I will aid you in this matter. But you must be the one to take the steps. And, Clea, you are thrown back to the room. With everyone in it. And uh, everyone else, um, literally not even two seconds went by. Okay, that was weird. So we'll look around. Claire is bullshitting, basically, with uh, Ray and Jesse and completely ignoring Clea at the moment. Good, good. So I didn't do anything bad after the lap dance, right? All I remember is you going to a private room with two of the girls. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. He has to check for STDs now. Wait, what? Oh no! Well, even if they did pop up, I could take care of that rather easily. I sure hope I didn't get anything. That almost sounded sarcastic, didn't it, Ray? Ray kind of looks. Ray kind of looks over at you and he's like, "Yep," and he starts kind of giggling. Uh, oh, you're back. How was the thing then, Clea? Oh, you didn't know it was gone. Yeah, no one even saw Clea like do anything. It was literally two seconds. Oh, then... oh. <coughs> uh, I mean, we could always do that thing uh, the kids do nowadays, Jesse, that question game if we really want to get to know each other, us three. Um... Sure. Why not? You just have to ask a question. The person answers honestly, and if they're caught lying, they have to take some kind of punishment, I believe is the rules. Oh, in that case, he uh, puts a mind shield on. It's a drinking game. <laughs> it is, is it? It's a fun one. I shouldn't drink. I just took my lithium. Oh, lithium. That does explain a lot. Oof. He says, uh, how well is um, your sphere of life? Mine? Yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to find a way to say it in character properly. She goes, I'm not a beginner, but I'm not an expert. 
out of character, she's got a two in life. Oh, cool. He says, you know, you can help yourself with that on your own, with your own techniques. You don't even need to take that stuff. She she kind of looks at the bottle. This was from before my uh, entrance. Awakening. It it's just a tool I use very rarely when people anger me and voices, even of the living, become too much. Claire. Yes. It's like just like in your overlay, you see an hourglass that looks exactly like that. Resting on the table. God damn it, Brandon. <laughs> uh, she'll go over to the hourglass and go, my, my, my. Aren't you pretty? That is from until dawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are quite pretty yourself. And I think I took too many pills. Can we hear any of this or see the hourglass mm, or just square? Nope. Nope. Nonsense. Oh, see, no, Brandon is having too much fun tonight. And the hourglass, the hourglass uh, floats up in front of you and literally goes straight through your skull, but doesn't hurt. And it says, nonsense, Claire. I'm always here for you. You just need but ask for aid. I feel like your peer pressure. Are you the peer pressure inside my skull? There's a bit of a pause. And it says, well, I guess so. Hmm, I guess then depending on the situation, I may listen to you. That would be a good idea or a bad idea. And you see in your mind's eye the hourglass just start to spin 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 and then it disappears and the pain and stress you were feeling is gone well that's a nice side effect jesse mm-hmm off to your right, you swear you saw a little bit of a sparkle, but it didn't quite catch your eye. Uh, okay. And after all that time, uh, Quinlan finally is like, uh, so, Clea, can, uh, can I help you out, or, uh, what? Yeah, but can not be done somewhere more privately? We can. Sure. Okay. Take you into a room and he'll start with your first memory. Um, hold on a moment here. I need to roll for him. Um, hey, um, what's your name, by the way? Quentin. Um, okay. Uh, you'll be number 18, okay? He nods. Sure thing. And he succeeds very well. And of course, I take it you don't resist. Uh, no. Okay. You see a fragmented memory. But his paradigm mixes with your paradigm very well. And through his paradigm, you see more of a city landscape. And you're standing, you're floating over a large city technologically advanced. You zoom down and you zoom between bars and futuristic cyberpunk looking buildings. And then you see a memory. 
you training in some kind of a gym, hitting a punching bag or something, so to speak, training and enjoying yourself, and then you receive a phone call. You can't hear what's on the other line, but, you're, but you in the vision says, yeah, I'll take it. Sure, if the money pays right. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it, bro. I'll be okay. And you hang up the phone, and the memory ends. Hey, was less words, huh? Quentin says, I didn't have anything to, uh, do with that. I didn't invade anything. What did you see? Well, I was floating over a city that looked like... Yeah, that's, uh, that's part of my paradigm. Okay, okay. So I was at this gym, and I was punching at a bag, and then I had a phone call, and it just replied that I... Probably it was a job because I said, "Yeah, if the money is right, I'll take it, and don't worry." And that's that's it. It doesn't really tell me too much. Hmm. Technically, that was a lie, but I'll let that slide. Um, what, he doesn't what, seem to pay. What was a lie? Because that wasn't all. <laughs> that wasn't. Yeah, all that wasn't everything. Um, <laughs> but Quentin, oh, if, what did I miss? Well, what, what did I leave don't out? worry, bro. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, but that could be that, that could be insignificant, though. Indeed, but it was still an important part of the thing that okay. you didn't tell him. But he won't he won't pay attention if you if you don't tell him. He won't pry you on it. How, uh, I don't know what I can get from that. Apart from I was working out at a gym, I got a job, and I spoke to a person with whom I was comfortable with. Roll me an interesting role here. Roll me intelligence plus wits, diff six. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, oh. Uh. My wits are fucked. <laughs> no witty retort. <laughs> well, do you see me being witty? I'm being bratty. <laughs> Two. Two wits? Okay. You remember something you saw in the dream? There was a PDA or something that was next to your gym bag. It had an address on it. For whatever reason, this is standing out in your mind's eye. Can I see the address? Yes. Do you have a notepad handy? Yeah. 1871 Harrisburg Road. Uh, what road? 1871 Harrisburg Road. Harrisburg? Harrisburg Road. Harrisburg. Hanover, Pennsylvania. Okay. Oh, out of character question. Uh, does the nightmares play into the memories somehow that I have? Yes, they will. Okay. Okay. Uh, now that I think about it, there was something else. There was a gym bag and a PDA, and there was an address. I'm sorry, guys. I gotta go. Goodbye. Have okay. fun. Peace, man. And it was an address in Pennsylvania. Hmm. Might be something to look into. Nonetheless, he gives you he gives you his contact information, he shakes your hand and he says, Call me whenever you need help, or whenever you're ready for the next step. I bid you a good day, Clea. How will I know? You'll know. 
smiles a bit, walks out the door. Okay. Guess that's something. And so go out to the main room, see who's left there. Uh, just Taryn and Matthias now. And of course Sam, because he, I mean Ray, because he's, you know, near. Uh, oh, she doesn't see Claire? Oh, Claire's there. My second should be there too, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Chris is there. Okay. So we'll go over to the guys, staying away from Claire, because she's still creeped out by her. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tess. No, no, it's okay. Oh, see, I know, but in character, but, there's yeah, Claire. Yeah, Claire. this is creepy. And, and I would Kuya see right issues. Claire's literally just smiling and seems her mind is somewhere else. So she's probably talking to something. Okay, well, I, she's not going to be Claire. She's just going to go to the guys. Okay. You guys uh, see... um. You see Matthias and Taryn kind of sitting at the table. Matthias is like making little tiny ice sculptures, like ice origami swans. And then Taryn is doing the same thing, except he's making them out of light. Like it literally looks like he's taking light and solidifying it and making origami. Clea will sit down at the table and face desk. Like literally let her head fall on the desk. Like oh. So she's doing what Claire was doing earlier. No, it's just like, oh, this is too much. <laughs> Matthias pauses and he looks over at Dahlia. And he says, did I just hear a mage say this is too much? I think you did. No, not you guys. Uh, everything. Matthias. <laughs> Matthias starts to pat himself down. Yeah, no, and he's like, Dahlia? He's like, Dahlia? I didn't, Am I in the, I didn't, yeah. I didn't, yes, dear. Am I in the dreaming? I didn't mean. <laughs> She's going to come over and, you know, pinch him a little bit. Ah. No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Shut up! Sorry. Yeah, so yes. I used to. Have Claire start drawing her hourglass she saw, because why not? Indeed, behave, detective. No. Don't do that. <laughs> detective. No. Stop. So. Uh, if you if you if you wish to commit if you wish to die by alcohol, simply watch Lucifer. And take a shot every time he says no, detective. No, no. You'll get drunk very yeah, easily. No, I'm not doing that. But anyway, back in the game. Anyway, I, I didn't mean about you guys and just the things and the. Mm, and my brain hurts. <laughs> Matthias looks back to Dolly and he's like, Did I just hear a maid say her brain hurts? She's not the only one whose brain hurts. Why does it, that seem so strange to you? It's not. Doesn't not. Does it not happen to you? No, not really. Are you sure? He just kind of. He stares at her blankly, like. You've clearly never met a changeling. I. Have I? She will look around. Well, well me. Oh, then. He, yeah, I have. What about it? He just says, I'm, I'm not even going to get into that one. Well, how... Well, how am I supposed to get to know people if I'm asking questions and, and you, you just... You just brush me off like that? Well, let's put it this way. Um... pauses for a moment and then he says well think of it like uh, a kid in a candy factory right you've got all these different variations and cool things you can do that's a mage a changeling is a guy who bursts into that candy factory and starts dress walking around like a looney tunes character and knocking over all the candy machines saying that's a changeling
Didn't you have butterfly wings? You should see the real him. I'm not sure if my mind can take it, but thank you for the offer, I guess. Maybe Both Matthias. Time. Both Matthias and Taryn kind of chuckle a bit. And they say, and Matthias says, sure. Are you another that time. too, number one? Taryn goes, no, I'm fallen. And then he looks at Matthias. Matthias is a changeling, a being of creation. I am a being of kind of a high umber, so to speak. Dahlia can probably tell you more about me than I can. But Matthias is from the uh, creativity kind of plane. 101. Drop uh, dreaming. Oh. 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 Okay. That place is After all, scary. <laughs> and Math Matthias chuckles. And he looks over at Taryn, and then he looks at Clea, and he says, "You didn't think the uh, you didn't think your dreams were not real, now, did you?" I don't think she did. <laughs> well, my dreams aren't particularly pleasant. Oftentimes, the dreaming is not a pleasant place. I don't think I've ever had a pleasant dream. Well, we'll have to fix that then, won't we? <laughs> well, if it's... Oh, you're a naughty one, aren't you? If it was that easy... <laughs> Yeah, he looks at Dahlia. Flew, I totally flew over her head, by the way. <laughs> he, 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 looks, he looks at Dahlia, like, kind of like, oh, duh, kind of a look. She can't <laughs> see the look. He's, he, he realizes this, and he's like, he hits his head, and he's like, well, of course, Dahlia, I am a fallen, after all. I mean, it's what some of us mm, do. True. Am I missing something here? It clearly oh, yeah. flew over your head. Hey, if you think I'm crazy, Dahlia, he points over at Matthias. He's like, you should have seen what Matthias did at King Arthur's court. Matthias just looks over at Taryn and he's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you shut up now, Taryn. Don't you dare. Oh. No, Dahlia. You're going no, to have to no, tell me this no, story no, sometime. No, that, no, 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 that. <laughs> I'm going to get you, Taryn. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you good. And Taryn's like, <laughs> oh, any time, baby, bring it on. Thais just looks daggers at Terran. It's like, oh, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you good. You mean the King gonna, Arthur from the uh, gonna put, story? I'm gonna put yeast in your pants. Yes. That's King different. Arthur, Merlin. Actually, I should take you all to meet Merlin sometime. You mean the know. actual Merlin? You know, the, yes. the sword and stone kind of Merlin? Yes, the sword and stone Merlin, <coughs> one and the same. And he's real? Yes, I'm his apprentice. Okay. Yeah, Merlin's real. I hope he's not holding any grudges. Oh, what did you do to him? Claire's laughing from her table near them. I, uh, well, I, um, I, uh, uh, I, oh, uh, if you think I haven't heard that story, I just I didn't realize that was you. Did you well, read rub... the Lady of the Lake? Lake didn't. It wasn't P. Oh my God! He fucked Lady of the Lake. No, I didn't do that. But I was insulted by her, so I. Uh... Oh my God! He pooped in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> Claire is just looking at the face now. By the way, Scott. the laughter is in character because it's hilarious. You know, Merlin told me that story. I just didn't realize it was you. I just, I just, she was just. He's just. <laughs> He's... That is good. Okay, I like this guy. <laughs> she just, 
She was. You have to understand, Dahlia. She oh, trust so, me, I know her. She was so stuck up at the time. Oh, she so kind of is. Did you? Did, did she try to give you a sword? Not me. Oh, that's King why Arthur. you pooped at her. <laughs> that's so. <laughs> that's so vulgar and funny. <laughs> she uh, yeah. Clea. Yeah. Am I to assume that all that laughing was in character? Yes. <laughs> Congratulations, another memory's gonna trigger. Just oh, a moment shit. here. <laughs> I was being too human. <laughs> you have a memory. You're sitting at a dinner table with a man, a woman, and another person kind of around your age. Black hair, kind of somewhat normal looking man. Your mother has blue hair and your father has, you know, kind of a redhead perception you know, going on. Your hair is not natural, right? <laughs> I know. Okay. Where do you think you got the idea to dye it? <laughs> um, you're all sitting around a table at a dinner and you're all laughing the man is happy the woman is happy the other man is happy even you're happy you're all happy and content and then your phone rings and the memory ends your phone rings in the memory and then the memory ends Okay, when I, uh, how, how much time passes when this happens? Literally almost none. Yeah, so I will, my, my laughter will be uh, cut very ab abruptly, like, uh, and then Cleo will take out her journal and start scribbling some notes on it, then put it back down. And we'll look around, see if everyone, anyone has noticed anything weird. Uh, I think... Taryn and Matthias, definitely. Mm. Like, uh, Claire will show the hourglass sketch, though, to Ray and ask if he knows the symbol. The best drawing she could do of it. Ray kind of squints at it a bit. Hold on. Squints at the drawing, and he says, well, I've seen a little bit of that in the Euthanatos sketches, but, uh... It likes to talk. It's kind of like peer pressure at a high school party. Shrugs? Maybe it's your avatar. Mm, I guess that would make sense. I never really saw that. Hmm. He's okay. Believe it or not, the first time mine came to me. Actually, all of you, you're going to love this. Guess what the first incarnation of my avatar was? A monkey? She she raises a hand. It can have more than one incantation. Yes. Your avatar can appear to you as almost anything it wants to at any time. Yeah, but was it a monkey? I may have seen it then before. Who knows? No, it was a, uh, it was a lobster that I was eating at a New Orleans restaurant. Mm. But it was close. Huh. You have you have no idea how weird that is just to be sitting down eating a lobster and then it starts to talk to you and tells you the ways of magi. Did you Not as weird as shadows shooting out of plants and chasing you as a child. Uh, well, did you that. continue eating the lobster while it was talking to you? <laughs> no. Okay, never mind me. It's kind of inhumane to eat something once it can talk to you, Clea. Ray's just looking at Clea and he's just trying so hard not to laugh. And he's like, what do you think, Clea? Of course not. I had to ask. That would be a little odd. Well, what would be odd is if everybody in the restaurant would see you just talk to a lobster instead of eating it. Well, yeah, that was that was the other weird part. No one saw me talking to it. 
How do you know? Yeah. Because when I was done talking with the lobster, the restaurant was completely deserted, and I was the only one in there. Turns out the place had been closed for weeks. Okay, that's creepy. Indeed. That's very, very creepy. Very creepy. Yeah. You're darn right it was. But I got used to it. After a while, my avatar started uh, manifesting himself as, I kid you not, uh, Darth Maul. Wait, does anyone here watch Star Wars? Yeah. Character, was that episode out in 2000? Yes, I want to say. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah, episode yeah, 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 yeah. Heck, was, episode yeah, one was yeah, out for was a long school, time. Yes. Okay. Move along. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Okay, that's cooler than a lobster. Way cooler than a lobster. But Clea will think to herself, my avatar's cooler. <laughs> he says, no, and now it just comes purchase me as some creepy Sith guy. But well, my avatar's okay. I mean, I guess it's better than an hourglass peer pressuring you. She says with a smile. Now what exactly is it pressuring you to do? A question for a question, Clea. Stick burn. Uh, you know what? Maybe I don't care that much. Or maybe I don't want to hear it because it's going to be something creepy. No, it just asks me to open up and ask people for more. Clea, this kind of strikes you since your avatar literally just asked you the same thing. Okay, that's, that's, that's quite odd. Okay. So, what kind of question do you need to ask people? She starts to ask something, and then she changes the question. She goes, How do you get your hair such a nice, pretty wave? A little flip. I went to the salon. Hmm. Which, which now you know, Clea is actually Hannah's salon. And now you know that the woman that you've been getting your hair done by is actually the lead cult of ecstasy in Orlando. Yeah, actually, my hair lady was here. Just didn't catch your name. I don't yeah. think. Was she the one sitting beside the guy who liked to party? Uh, yep. Yes, yes, that one. I don't have her name. Hannah. Okay, I'll I'll write that down. Okay. Hannah. Well, there's not many Hannahs. Yeah, she does my hair. <laughs> She's the head of the cult of ecstasy here in Orlando. Oh, oh my! Uh, yeah, uh, Claire's like rubbing her wrist enough that the sleeves come up now. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. Covers the scars back up. No, I I don't know um much about them except they like to drink a lot. I mean, no, no. It's more emotion than anything else. Well, I like to drink occasionally. <laughs> For them, it's more about the emotion, the true feeling. I've probably only one, ever met. Probably one could say they cast using feeling. At least I think that's right, Dahlia. Dahlia gives a nod. Speaking of feeling and things and the cult of ecstasy, I believe you told them that you have some good shit. I think <laughs> I might need some yeah. time. <laughs> so, okay, that's awesome. We will end the session with Matthias, Taryn, and everyone going out 
to get <laughs> some good Dahlia's shit. Place. To get some good shit at Dolly's place. I think that is a perfect. Uh, Claire, Claire probably wouldn't go there. She'd go instead to the church that she's been drawing from the voices to see who's there. Mm -hmm. You can go wherever you please. Uh, there is one thing you'll see at the church before we end it. Um, you'll see this woman at the church. Of course. I also was doing this to open it for cross fun times with Shauna later. Oh, yeah. Uh, this woman comes up to you and she says, Ah, oh, Claire, good to see you again. She gives you a big hug. How, uh, how can I help you tonight? Oh, I had a voice yell about this place, so I was just checking it out. Hmm. Was there anything particular about this place that you wish to know, child? Something about a priest, that's all. That's all they said. Oh, huh. what kind of a priest? Don't know. Hmm. Zyra looks like she's deep in thought, and it looks like she's just thought of something. She nods and she says, well then, perhaps we will need to find you this priest then. And with that, we will end the session with the players going to get high <laughs> and Claire looking for answers. Thank you players for playing. Thank you watchers for watching. Good night.